Good evening. This is the regular meeting of the Planning, Ojai Planning Commission, Wednesday, September 4th, 2013, in the Council Chambers in Ojai City Hall. Members of the public wishing to address the Planning Commission on items appearing on the agenda are requested to complete a speaker card and file it with the Secretary prior to the start of the meeting. Cards are available in the lobby. Speakers should state their name and address for the record and limit your comments to three minutes or less. Comments must be directed to the Commission and not to the audience. While the Planning Commission is, is in session, all in attendance are expected to maintain order and decorum and obey the orders of the Chair. Uh, roll call. Becker, Crabtree, Osborne? Here. Foster? Here. Merck? Here. Nicklin? Here. Nolan? Here. Commissioner Osborne, would you do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Um, public communications. The public commu communication item is for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of city business other than that scheduled in the agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the Commission and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than those for emergency items, no action or non-agendized items can be taken at this meeting. Mr. Chair, I do have one item that came up this week for the council to consider in very long range, but um, I was talking to some people who were saying neighbors of theirs put up a huge TV in their backyard because you can do that now. And <laughs> it's becoming a nuisance in the neighborhood. It, it's bright and it's loud and I, we don't have any regulations for anything like that, but it's something that we ought to sort of think about long term. I just wanted to get that on the record so we could start thinking about it. Thank you. Any members of the public? Any? Nope. The consent calendar is approved by roll call on one motion. Should any member of the commission wish to discuss or disapprove an item, it must be removed from the consent calendar and considered a separate item. So make a move to approve the minutes of the last commission meeting. I'll move we approve the minutes. Second. Osborne? Yes. Foster? Yes. Merck? Yes. Nicklin? Abstain. Nolan? Abstain. The uh, Municipal Advisory Council Planning Commission Liaison Report. Uh, the uh, see our representative, she's not here this evening. Um, the next MAC meeting, September 16th, and Commissioner Osborne, you on the list for that. Thank you. Uh, the disclo disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. Um, None to report. Uh, I'm familiar with the site. I went by the site, looked at it. I'm familiar with the site too. And I visited the site. So we're going to move ahead and on to public hearing item, design review permit, DRP 13 stroke 9, for a two-story remodel of an existing single family resident located at 601 Crestview Drive, property owner, Ernst Rohde. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair Nicklin, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Josh Janowitz with Rincon Consultants. I'm a contract planner uh, with the City of Ojai, so uh, it's great to meet all of you. I look forward to working with all of you uh, now and in the future. Uh, if you'll bear with me, I'll just take a few minutes and, and run through a quick PowerPoint presentation that provides the details of the project under consideration. Uh, the subject property is just over a quarter of an acre. It's obviously located at 601 Crestview Drive. Uh, the property slopes oops, 
back up a little bit, apologize. Property slopes gently from east to west. Um, and it's developed with a four bedroom, uh, 3,256 square foot residence with approximately 2,100 square feet of living space. The existing structure is two story. Got a, a couple of pictures of the front elevation here and also a couple, uh, picture of the rear elevation. Uh, the top of the roof extends approximately 19 feet above the finished floor elevation. You can also uh, make note of the, the gentle slope from the back of the lot to the front of the lot here, necessitating the construction of a variable height retaining wall that extends from approximately one foot here uh, on the southern portion of the property and rises to approximately four feet here on the northern portion of the property. Uh, the proposed project consists of a first and second story addition uh, and remodel of the existing residence. Uh, total square footage after the addition, or the total addition would be almost 1,500 square feet. And you can see here with the main caveat being only uh, 583 square feet are actually livable. Uh, we provide a breakdown of that square footage here. The majority of the living space addition would occur on the first floor with a small addition to the garage and approximately this location here. We do have a, uh, uh, the primary addition is in the master bedroom area in the rear of the residence. And we also have a large addition to that second story balcony that surrounds the master bedroom. The total square footage of the site after the addition would increase from approximately 3,256 square feet to 4,735 square feet. The main components of the addition, oh, I keep hitting the back button instead of the lead. Main components of the addition include the exterior remodel. So you can see here that there's quite a dramatic transformation between the existing condition and the proposed. And the addition or remodel primarily consists of converting the residence from somewhat utilitarian architectural style to contemporary craftsmen, uh, as illustrated by the earth tone materials that you can see here on the exterior building. We have various stone elements that are included uh, in the porch columns and along the rear elevations of the proposed structure. We have modifications to the roof line, a uh, small addition to the roof line here. We have a new roof that's proposed uh, from a standard shingle roof to a standing seam metal roof. Board and batten siding pro uh, are, is proposed. And finally, we have an exterior fireplace that is proposed on the rear of the residence that doesn't quite show up here in this rendering, but you'll see it uh, in further uh, in, in the following slides that show the elevation. Just a quick exhibit uh, showing the, the primary areas where we have the addition. What's shown here in yellow is uh, the addition to the first floor and also the area, uh, the balcony area on the second floor. Uh, the, basically, the proposed remodel and, um, and uh, expansion of the single family residence occurs within the rear portions of the lot. Uh, the porch uh, is rebuilt, but essentially it stays in the same place. Um, the, uh, and that's the same can be said for the rest of the residential dwelling. As a result, we're going to maintain uh, the setback lines that are shown here in red. Uh, there, are, there is a minor encroachment into the front yard setback that currently exists with the porch. So the proposed remodel of the porch area would essentially maintain that minor encroachment. There's also a minor encroachment here within the side setback that would not be increased as a result uh, of the proposed remodel. Uh, maximum setback distance, uh, again, would be maintained at approximately 24 feet. Uh, which exceeds the 20-foot setback requirement in the R1 zone. Here we get into the floor plan. Uh, again, this is the first floor plan showing the uh, addition to the ground floor living area and also the minor addition to the kitchen and the garage. Uh, the other proposed improvement is obviously the uh, rebuilding the porch element and of it, adding the various architectural enhancements to the porch. This next slide shows the extent of the second floor improvements. The main improvement being the addition of this semicircular balcony here and also an extension of the uh, second story master bedroom. Just an illustration of the, the various architectural elevations. Uh, you can see here that 
there's quite a bit of enhancement occurring as a result of the proposed remodel. We've got new windows, new doors, new roof elements, uh, exterior stone is added to the rear elevations. So the overall form of the building remains the same, uh, but there are quite a few enhancements that are proposed to be integrated into the overall project. In terms of general plan land use consistency, the main thing we're looking for here is that the development is compatible with the surrounding environment um, and that the elevations are going to fit within the, the overall neighborhood context and that the proposed addition isn't going to be uh, blocking views that are currently enjoyed by existing residences. So the proposed project with its contemporary craftsman style will enhance the elevation. It's going to improve the street scene through the introduction or integration of new landscaping, the new porch and entry feature, the new windows, uh, and the other uh, exterior building materials that are being added to the exterior of the building. And also the mass of the structure as viewed from Crest View Drive will remain the same. Just a quick summary of the project's consistency with the applicable development standards. Again, we won't go through all of them in detail, but in essence all the proposed uh, retaining walls and the existing walls uh, will be consistent with the uh, city height limitations. The setbacks will remain uh, consistent with the city development standards, although uh, the minor encroachments that do exist will be maintained. Uh, there'll be no further encroachment into the front and side setback areas. Minimum lot sizes is, is consistent, site coverage, uh, building height. The last thing, or another thing to note is that the project is proposing to integrate a street tree that's consistent with the community forest management plan. So there is one proposed 24 inch box sycamore tree that will be planted in the planter uh, that's just south of the existing driveway. There were uh, some unpermitted tree trimming and removal activities uh, have occurred on the project site. Uh, the owner was notified of these unpermitted activities as part of the planning application and the uh, property owner along with his representative have worked with the City Public Works Department to ensure uh, that the appropriate uh, management plan and the appropriate mitigation has been included uh, as conditions of approval as part of the project. Those are specifically referenced in conditions number 11 through 13 in the resolution of approval. The, the primary components of the uh, mitigation or the conditions of approval include the payment of mitigation fees, which I understand have already been paid, uh, annual uh, commitment to an annual inspection and health status report for the trees uh, that were trimmed. Uh, that monitoring plan will continue for approximately three years. And uh, also there's a requirement to ensure that non-natives continue to, or actually remove some of the non-native trees that were planted within the city's open space area. And that open space area that I referred to is approximately in this location here. So with that, that concludes staff's presentation. We are recommending approval of design review permit 13-09 subject to the findings and conditions of approval. Uh, the project was considered to be categorically exempt from CEQA, so you'll see a brief analysis in the staff report with regard to that issue. Uh, finally, I'll close with and just briefly summarize some neighbor concerns uh, that were presented to city staff on August 15, 2003. There was a concern uh, with the proposed street tree. Uh, the resident just wanted to make sure that the proposed sycamore tree would not in any shape or form ruin the sidewalk in the future. Uh, so there is a requirement as part of, a, of the project conditions of approval that they work with the public works director to, to ensure that the planting program for the street tree meets the city specifications and as a result would not ultimately impact the sidewalk. Second concern was whether the city was going to require screening of uh, of a backflow device. I think it's actually a, a gas meter that's located on the property. Uh, that issue will be addressed through the planting of front yard landscaping that is proposed as part of this remodel project. The last concern was that uh, was over previously completed work that was done in Crestview Avenue. Uh, a new gas line had to be installed along with, I think, with a, an extension of an existing cable line. So there was some trenching done in Crestview Drive. However, uh, staff did inspect the street and did confirm 
that those that the trenching that was done, I believe, by Southern Cal Edison and, and maybe the cable company, uh, were patched to city specifications. So there are no remaining issues uh, in the street as a result of those activities. So with that, I'll close. We're available for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have any questions? I, I just wanted to clarify, did, did the owner plant non-native plants in the city's open space area? Yeah, I believe there was uh, a couple palm trees planted, and I, I don't recall if it was this owner or the previous owner, but nevertheless, non-native trees were identified, and as a result, are required to be removed as part of the conditions of approval. But I mean, it wasn't in this property. It was in the city's open space I property. And, and those have been removed? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I have a speaker card. Um, yes, would you like to speak first? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Shellnut. I'm at 35A Kunkel Street in beautiful downtown Oakview. Um, I'm the architect for this project. Um, the owner recently purchased this property and plans to move here full time at some point. So was pretty eager to get going. So he kind of jumped the gun on a few things. Um, the house when he purchased it was in pretty poor condition. So he wanted to get started as soon as possible. Um, the existing house is built in the late 50s, um, an old pseudo sort of ranch style. The whole front um, property was overgrown, so he tore out most of that and found that the front porch was really didn't have much foundation, it was all cracked, so he's going and replacing that. And along with that, he decided to make it so he wants to live in it. Um, so necessitated the additions to the rear to make it a more of a livable home for him, in addition to the kitchen, a living space, um, outdoor fireplace so we can have an outdoor living area by the pool. Um, the existing stairway is only 30 inches tall, and although I can walk up, but anyone taller than me hits their head. Um, so we moved the stairwell to the back and made it more of a two-story entry with a little balcony on the second floor that kind of looks into the entry. Um, he initially wanted a different style home. He wanted to change the style completely, um, but given the age of the house, the structure just wouldn't permit the change in style to something. He actually wanted something like the, uh, more of a Spanish kind of style. Um, so we went with changing it to a contemporary craftsman. He wants a, a large view of the open space on the rear, um, mainly why he purchased the property. Um, so we have a large expanse of deck on the second floor and integrated the existing materials on the front, which are more board and bat and some uh, cement plaster, and we added that to the back with more stone finishes. Uh, most of the addition portion is the deck on the second floor. Um, that's pretty much it for the projects. So I'll be available for any questions you might have. Any, any questions? <coughs> sure. Mark, is the, uh, we have a l landscape plan here. And, you know, when you look at the existing resident, it's, it's, it's so stark, it's, right, uh, right. it's a desert. Um, and I'm seeing, you know, uh, is, is, I'm, I'm going to assume that, should I assume that the intent is as part of the approval that the landscape plan in front of me is going to be part of the build out? Yes, his original intent, he wanted to do a courtyard in the front of his house first. Mm. But I convinced him that he really should get a overall scope of the whole project before he does something he's gonna have to tear out. So his intent is to landscape around to get a buffer from the street with a, show, a three foot high buffer wall and then um, do the courtyard 
in the front with all that landscaping I basically show. Mm -hmm. I don't, didn't really pick out any type of, of trees or shrubs or anything. I just pretty much show it as a general concept plan. Okay, sounds but good. But it will be part of this the entire project. I'm sure it's going to be a, must be a pretty spectacular view off that deck from that location there. Well, huh? Does it overlook the trees? Uh, well, part of the issue is the existing house was just built as a house. There's really just a couple little gun slots on the back. There's really no, they don't take advantage of the view at all, mm -hmm. which is why we went this the This changes we did. that. Mm -hmm. Great. Good design. Thank you. I have a question. I'm not sure if this should be directed to the architect or to staff. But um, with the amount of um, remodeling that they're doing, wouldn't it normally be required that we would have a, a landscape plan and it would be labeled? In other words, this plan that I'm looking at just has proposed landscaping. It's single family, even though it's two story? Yeah, it, the, the landscape is not. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Um, yeah, we um, open the public hearing. We I have one speaker card, but uh, Mark, that was from you. So, is there any other members of the public wishing to address the commission? I'll move we close the public hearing. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Steve, would you like to do the recommendation? Pardon? Would you like to do the sure, recommendation? Sure. Thank you. Um, I make a motion to adopt PC resolution number 13-6. Yeah. Approving design review permit DRP 13-09 and subject to the findings and conditions of approval. I'll second that. Any discussion or roll call? Roll Any call. discussion? Okay, Osborne? Yes. Foster? Yes. Merck? Yes. Nicklin? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Projects approved. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. We're going to move on to uh, item number three, um, Planning Commission Subcommittee Reports. Oh, that would be me. Uh, we did meet today. The Complete Street Subcommittee met today. And I did want to make an announcement, and I believe it's on the city um, website. Um, the uh, mob shop, our local bike shop, and uh, one of the owners happens to be an mem active member of Complete Streets. They are sponsoring a... Um, bike to school and work week, the week of October 7th. So I just encourage uh, any of my fellow commissioners who may have the opportunity to ride to work or if they have children or no, you know, friends, neighbors, spouses, what have you, to encourage it and get behind it. And basically the, uh, the ride is going to be um, along Grand <coughs> Avenue. The, uh, they're working with the police department and also with our um, public works department. And um, Let's see what else is going on. I think I mentioned uh, before that we had gone to a workshop for uh, the Strategic Growth, Growth Council grant. And I just recently received an email from the Strategic Growth Council. And it looks like they're going to be ready uh, sometime in November with um, the new guidelines for this round and the application forms. So um, I'm hoping you know, that we'll get to move forward with that. And Heather, our new planning assistant, um, I believe will be working with us on that. And, um, and then in the meantime, we, our, our public works director, uh, Greg Grant, has some wonderful projects going on. Um, the money has uh, been allotted either through a grant or through the budget. But he is um, actually in the process of um, hiring an um, outside 
uh, traffic engineer that's going to help with some of the projects. And uh, the projects include um, some improvements on the um, Aliso Street and Lyon. There's a crosswalk where they're looking at expanding the, the sidewalks, um, also doing um, some addressing at the crosswalk on um, Matillaha uh, on the south side of the farmer's market. And then we're also working on some wayfinding signage for the bike trail. Um, I'm just giving you a snippet because there's really about 10 or 11 projects. But anyway, they're all exciting and they're all great in you know, improvements to the community. So that's, that's my report. And then one last thing from our um, uh, model water landscape ordinance. Um, it will be coming, um, I think it's on the 10th. Yeah, here it is, <laughs> September 10th. Uh, we'll be doing just a, a very quick mini presentation, which we're hoping will only be about five minutes, and then open it up to um, question and answer. So I believe you've all been given a copy of the uh, rough draft if you wanted. To, I don't expect you to take a look at it right now, but um, you know, if you do have any comments and what have you and you want to get back to us, you can let us know. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And we get on to our city council liaison. Mayor Blatz. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Good members evening. of the commission. Nice to see you all. Hopefully you're staying cool out there, as hot as it is. Uh, wow, what a quick meeting tonight, huh? Amazing. I really don't have anything more to report than I did at the last meeting, although I do think we do. Do we have a uh, joint meeting next week on Tuesday? Okay, so I'm looking forward to that, as I always always do. For those of you that are interested, of course, you've, by now, the residents of Ojai that are under Golden State Water have heard that the vote went very well as far as the, the uh, bond issue. That's just the first step of many steps, but FLO, which was the, which was the dynamic organization that really worked awfully hard and tire tirelessly, at getting all the information out to the citizens to give them the ability to make a intelligent decision on Sunday starting at nine o'clock at the gazebo in Libby Park there's going to be a little ceremony showing our appreciation to them and to the people that work the phone banks and things like that it won't be a long ceremony but it's something for us to say thank you to them it was a core of people that I can tell you worked hours and hours and hours on it so I'm very appreciative of them. Any questions you guys have of me tonight, or you want to get out of here as quickly as this meeting is gone? There's none from me. No. Just thank you very much. As always, I really appreciate it. That was a nice project we had a chance to look at tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'll adjourn the meeting.